Welcome to this video on seven quick productivity tips that you can use in Microsoft Outlook. Now, just a quick caveat at the beginning here. I'm using the new Outlook. It's very similar to Outlook Online. So if you're using Outlook on a browser, it should behave in a similar way for most of these processes. If you're using an older version of Outlook, some of these things might not work, but hopefully some of them will work nicer for you. So just to caveat that right at the beginning, in case you do have any issues. So a couple of really useful options here. So this first one, we're going to reply to an email with a meeting rather than going back and asking loads of questions. We want to get a meeting in the diary. Let's just have a verbal conversation about what needs to happen. So you can do this really nice and easy. And then you've got that time blocked in your diary as well. So you don't have to worry about when you're going to reply to it, how you're going to find that information and waiting for replies backwards and forwards as well. So really simply when you are on that email, you'll see it's appeared on the right hand side and I've got three dots there and I'm going to click on those three dots and I get a little pop up box and what I want is other reply actions. And then you can see I can reply all by meeting and that's just going to generate a meeting it's going to pop up for me. I'm going to make that fit into the box that I am recording in. And you can see I can change there my date and time. Um, I can see who's been allocated that meeting, who it's been sent to, and all of that great stuff. And I can obviously change the title as well. But if I do scroll down, you can see it's got that information that was in the email attached to it. So really, really useful and easy top tip there to work with. So reply directly to an email with a meeting. Let's just get rid of that and discard it. The second one is sometimes it's really annoying to flick between emails and calendar. So you can actually open your calendar in a new window, which is really useful if you've got multiple screens going on. All you need to do to do this really quickly is go to the calendar on the left hand side, right click, and then you can open it in a new window and that will open up your calendar so you can see both side by side, which is really easy, really, really easy to work with. Tip three is very similar, but a little bit different. And this, this depends on how you want to work. So sometimes I'm happy with it both being in the same screen, but I just gonna want to flick very seamlessly between my email and calendar. And there's a quick shortcut you can use control and one and control and two to switch between the two. So if I press control and one, it's not going to move anything. But if I can press control and two, it's going to move onto my calendar. Control and one takes me back to my email. So control and one takes you to your email. Control and two takes you to your calendar. And it means you're not having to move your mouse and find the right one and accidentally click on the wrong thing, you can just quickly do that with control one and control two. And if you forget which one, just try them both so you can see which one works. So that's tip three. Tip four, we're gonna just quickly edit the view here so that we can see calendar and tasks on the right hand side. So you can see here, I've got my folders down the left. I've got my emails in the middle and I've got a viewing pane on the right hand side. But what I can also do is add some extra bits on the right hand side so I can see what else is going on within this screen. So let's go to the view tab. And then I just want to go to layout. And in layout, I want my day. So if I show that because it's currently hidden, is now showing me that information. Now this might not work very, very well for you because depending on how big your screen is, it will reduce other things going on. So if you don't want to see this, that's great. If you've got a massive screen, you can have all of them next to each other. But actually at the moment, this is reducing what else is going on and it's not really helping me. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna click on that cross. Now actually I don't even have to go to the view pane because you'll see in the top, blue bar, I've actually got that task app there. And if I click on it, it will reopen it again. Click on it and it will close it. So there's even a quicker shortcut there to see it. So if like me, you've got loads of folders, this next tip will help you out because you can see I've got multiple email addresses attached to this Outlook and I've got a favorites section at the top. So sometimes that will be the piece that I see and then I've got to scroll down to see everything else. But if there's folders that I use all the time, I can add them to my favorites. 
very quickly, let's have a look at this Project Paris one. Click on those three dots and then add to favourites. And it's going to appear there in my favourites at the top. It's still where I sit it usually in the email box, but it's also now in my favourites. So I can access that really quickly and I'm not having to scroll down and open up subfolders and find what I'm looking for. So definitely have a look at how favourites might work for you and add the relevant folders to your favourites. So you're going to find the ones that you're looking for really quickly. So number six is turn on show as conversation. So this will help Outlook group the same emails together into one thread so that you're not having to go through different parts of your inbox to try and find where those replies are. And you're going to do that very quickly on the view tab. We're already there in the messages section here. If I click on this drop down, you've got the conversations option and I've got it turned on already. So Outlook groups my emails into conversations, almost like threads. So I don't have to go into different parts of my inbox or any of the folders to find parts of those conversations that were had before. Or I can change it to go back to show each message separately. So a couple of options there, whichever one works best for you. But grouping into conversations will just help you find all the information out in one go. The final one then, I'm going to go to calendar. And if I've got a meeting that I want to renew, I want to do again, or I've got some settings in there or something in there that I want to recreate, then the duplicate meeting option is a really useful one to work with. So I've got a Project Paris meeting here. I'm going to right click on it and you can see I've got the duplicate event option. Now, when I click on that, it's going to open up that event with all the same sets of information. I've got the title. I've got anything else I might need. And then all I need to do is fill it in, change the dates and times, make sure the relevant people are invited. And then I can just send that off. And rather than having to create things from scratch, it will just duplicate that really, really nicely for me. So again, another top tip there. So we've got a few really useful options for you. So replying to emails directly with meetings to really save time going backwards and forwards. Open that calendar in a new window. Really useful if you've got multiple screens. Switch between your emails on calendar using control one or control and two. You've got the tasks and calendar pane on the right hand side by either going to the view or just clicking it at the top to open it up. You can add your folders to favorites in your email just to make it so much easier to find the ones that you always need to work from. Turn on show as conversation. So it groups all of those emails in the thread together to really, really help you out. And then finally, duplicate meeting as well will really help you if you want to recreate a meeting and you're not wanting to start from scratch with all the details. It will really speed up your processes, especially if you're booking loads of different emails in there. If you've got some sessions to book, some demos, some training sessions, anything like that, you might want to duplicate those emails, especially if they're not at the same time. So you can't use the repeat function or the same type of uh, time or type of day. Then duplicate meeting is going to work really well for you. So some nice quick top tips there on this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.